Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to install DB2 11.5.8 client on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.1. Why do you want to install DB2 11.5.8 client? So let's say you have a database server which is a different server and you have an application server or a client machine and you want to connect to your database which is hosted on a remote machine on a different machine from this application server application server needs the drivers the db2 drivers and that's what is called as the client so the db2 driver or the db2 client will allow you to connect to a db2 database which is hosted on a different server now we still need to download the db2 client from the ibm website and if you when you want to download the DB2 client, you need to make sure you need to have an IBM ID. Now, there are some things that you need to do before, before actually allowing the database to connect from remote server. By default, the DB2 database will not be enabled to be so that you can connect it from remote server. So you need to do some settings. What are those settings? So we need to update that is a DBM config parameter called service name. We need to update it using db2 update dbm config command to the port number or port value which we want db2 to listen to or that's the port that we will be using to connect to db2 server. We also have a db2 registry so use the use the db2 com uh, variable using the db2 set command so you set the db2 com variable to tcp ip using the db2 set command update the db2 registry variable now these two parameters needs your instance to be recycled so stop and start your db2 instance using db2 stop and start command once this is done your work on the remote or the database server is done and you can safely disconnect from your database server because that's your work is done now what we, to install the db2 client you need to download the db2 client from ibm website if you you need to have an ibm id if you don't have one create one now this ibm id can be any of your existing email accounts if this is for your work use work email id if it is your personal use your personal email id to sign up for ibm id it's free of cost ibm does not charge you to create an ibm account download the software transfer the software to, to the server unzip the software and once you unzip the software you will find an utility called db2 install you will use the utility called db2 install to install the db2 once this is done now it's time to create the instance db2 client instance now to create the client instance you will be using a command called db2 i create but before that you need to have an user at the operating system so you need to have an instance owner user at the operating system level so ask the unix admin to provide you what with a user id which you will be using to create the client instance if you are the admin go ahead and create the user this particular user will become the client instance owner client instance owner so whatever user you need to have an user at the operating system level that's important for for you know creating the client instance even for the database instance you need to have an instance owner we call that as an instance id now once you created the instance using db2 i create command switch to db2 client instance using su which is a switch user minus the name of the instance the name of the user id in my case i'm using dbc to create the client instance now catalog the node once that is done the client instance is done now you have to do two things you need to catalog the tcp ip node and you have to catalog the database now catalog tcp ip node per instance so if you have multiple instances you will run this particular command multiple times if you have one instance then you will run this one time and if you have two databases in that particular instance you will run this particular command two times but you don't have to run this command two times because the node is already cataloged so node per instance database catalog database per database so if you have two instances run this command two times if you have one database if you have three databases you will run this particular command three times now 
Once these commands are ran, you will use the db2 terminate command to refresh the directory cache and then you are now ready to connect to your database using connect to statement, db2 connect to statement. Let's see all of this in detail. So this is the things that we have to do at the database level. We have to update the dbm config using service name and give the port value the whatever port that you want db2 list to listen to or db2 to connect to so this is the port then you will set a registry variable called db2 com to tcp ip so db2 set db2 com is equal to tcp ip stop and start your instance to make sure that those settings are effective once this is done your database server is now ready to accept the remote connections no more work is required to be done at the database server level now all the work that has to be done is at the client level so let's go to the client first we need to download the software from the ibm website once you have downloaded the software transfer the software to the to the operating system and unzip that particular software using tar minus xf command unzip it once you have unzipped that particular software go to that particular location where you have unzipped that particular software under that particular location you will find an utility called db2 underscore install use that particular utility to install the db2 software once that is done now you are you are ready to create the db2 instance so go to that particular directory where this is the location default location where the db2 will be installed again it is not mandatory to install db2 in this location you can choose a location of your choice however by default db2 will get installed in this particular location go to that particular location under that you will find a directory called instance under that directory you will find an utility called db2 i create that's the utility that you will be using to create a client instance so run a command db2 i create minus s client dbc the name this is the instance owner the user id that you created at the client level once that is done now your client is created now you have to run two commands catalog the node again you have to run the catalog node command as many as instances so if you have one instance you will run this command one time if you have two instances you will run this particular command two times the catalog database is per database so if you have two databases you will run this command two times now if you have one instance and two databases then you will run this command only once because once per instance and twice per database so one instance two databases which means this command has to be run twice this command has to be run once provided you want to connect to that particular database from remote server now then once you are done so let's let's understand this particular command a little bit so what you are saying here is catalog tcp ip node name the node name can be of your choice this is your choice remote ip address or host name this is the ip address or host name of the database server the where your database is running and server is equal to port number this is the port number of your your of your database server sorry the db2 instance now the example is here db2 catalog tcp ip node name of your instance this is your choice remote where where is the where is the what is the server name in my case i can use you can use the ip address or the host name and the server this is the basically the port number and this port number should match to what you have given here on the database server so we need to make sure that the same port you are using to connect to your db2 database now once that is done you will now run db2 catalog database database name as alias at node the node name this node name should be one which, which you have used here so this is the if you see i'm using rail 9 this is the node name that i've used in the catalog tcp ip node so this command has to be run in sequence you can't you can't run the catalog database first and catalog tcp ip node second you have to run this particular command first and then this particular command so you have to follow this particular tutorial in a sequential order now the as alias is optional if you can see as alias i have not specified the as if you don't specify as alias the default whatever database name that you use to connect that becomes the as alias but however if you want to create an alias for your database you can you can create one using as alias command now that we the catalog database is done catalog node is done let's connect to your database so you'll say connect to database name user whatever user using the password of the instance and then you will verify your connection is successful or not using db2 get connection state 
So now that we have seen all of the steps, let's go ahead and and first thing that we will do is we will download the DB2 so that we have the software ready. So open the browser and look search for download DB2 11.5.8 client. So let's look for that once uh, based on your search engine, you might get that on top or down. Now we are doing this on Linux. So let's go to we IBM data server client. So this is the software that we are going to download. So let's say click on download and and then you here you see it will the I'm choosing Linux 64 because my this exercise I'm doing on a Linux machine rail machine. So I'm going to choose this particular I'm going to check box and I'm going to say continue. Once you do that, it's going to it's going to download. It's going to give you this particular link to download the client. You can see it says client. Click on that particular link and it's going to download the software for you. Now I have already downloaded the software, so I'm not going to re-download the software. So I'm going to close this. Our work in Firefox is done or your browser is done. You can safely close the browser as we do not have any more work to be done. So now let's, as I mentioned, there are some things that we need to do at the at the the database server service name and port so let's do that so let's connect to our database server as the as the <clears throat> sorry as the instance owner and let's probably the instance is not running so let's run that particular instance and now let's verify using netstat minus an grep listen grep so let's see and you can see that the database is not listening on this particular port. So now what we need to do is we need to set something. So we need to change a DB2 config parameter. So I'm going to update the DBM config before doing that. Let's before doing that, I want to show you something. Let's cancel this. This particular machine is a Red Hat 9.1 machine and DB2 LS shows that 11.5 Point eight is installed. So this particular database server is running on 11.5.8 on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.1. So that's good. So now I'm going to I'm going to verify that whether I have got the which instance I'm connected to. So let's run the command db to get instance. And I'm connected to an instance called dbp. So let's run this particular command update dbm that's completed successfully. Now let's set the registry variable that's done let's stop and start and before doing that let's run this particular command and you can see 5001 is not listening now let's stop and start our instance so stop separated by start i'm going to stop and start that's done that's done stop is completed start is completed and i'm going to run the netstat command and you can see that now our database server is listening on 5001 which means whatever changes that we have done are successful and we can verify that so let's do that db to get dbm config grep for svce name and you can see that whatever port i have set here is now reflected in this and db to set minus all and you can see the db to com is set to tcp ip at the instance level our work on the main database server is done. So remember main database server is in the blue. Now I'm going to connect to the, now I'm going to connect to the, the client. The DB1 is the database server. DB2 is the client server. Now I'm going to clear this particular screen and I'm going to run DB2 LS and you can see on the, on the server that is 11.5.8. And if I run the same command on the client machine, I don't get any output and it says command not found, which means we have not at installed the client. So now it's time to install the client software. So before doing that, what we need to do is transfer the software and extract it. I'm, I'm not going to transfer it. I, I, I can access the remote directory directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that particular location where my software is kept ls minus l and you can see that i got a 11.5.8 64 bit linux client and again this particular machine is also this particular machine is also red at enterprise linux 9.1 and there is no db2 installed on this particular machine 
Now what we are going to do is we are going to install the client software on this particular machine. So to do that, first we need to extract that particular software. So before, before, before doing that, let's do something. Let's go to that particular location and verify that there is, it's, it's empty. There is nothing in that particular location. So let's go to this particular directory again and run the tar command and once let's wait for and that's done now let's go to this directory and run ls minus l and you can see that this particular directory was empty and now i got the client software so now let's go to that particular directory inside that particular directory you should be able to find an utility called db2 install use this particular utility to install the db2 client software so let's do that so i'm going to run this and it says there are some prerequisites which are not met i'm going to ignore them the reason is this is a 64-bit machine and there are these are 32 bit and i don't have them so let's fine i'm going to accept the license without accepting license you won't be able to proceed further install the db2 in the default directory yes we have to install it in the default directory i mean like you can change it uh, I'm, I'm going to choose to install it in the default directory now this is not mandatory to use the default directory you can use any other directory of your choice you if you want to install it in a different location you specify no and you give the name of the directory i'm not going to change it i'm going to say yes and then it's it's going to now it's going to start installing so right now the db2 db2 client is getting installed on this particular machine it says now the installation might take few seconds to few minutes based on how powerful is your machine uh the application server and the the what are the disks whether they those are ssd fast disk or they are hdd's old disk so based on cpu memory and the and the disk you might it might take few seconds and the execution completed successfully so the client install is done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a command called db2 ls and this time you can see that i got 11.5.8 installed on october 3rd third and you can see october 3rd is today's date so we we have installed that db2 software so that's the so only thing that we have done as of now is that db2 software is installed now the next part that we are going to do is we are now going to go to this particular directory so where is our db2 installed so let's look at and you can see this is the directory so i'm going to take this particular directory and under this you will be able to find a folder or directory called instance and you can see there is a directory called instance if you go inside that particular instance under that you will be able to find another utility called db2 i create and this is the utility so let's let me explain so i'm under the installed path so this is where the db2 is installed so 11.5 so this is where the db2 is installed under that there is a directory called instance under that instance there is a there is a executable called db2 i create this is the utility that we are going to use to create our db2 instance now remember i told you we need to have an operating system user id so ask your unix operators to create one and now i have already created it and let's let me show it to you so i've got a instance user called dbc and you can see okay it's, it's commented so it's it's not okay so i'm going to uncomment it so it won't work actually so for some reason i'm going to uncomment it so let's okay that's that's activated now let's verify okay so it's not activated and id dbc and you can see i got a user id called dbc dbc stands for db client now you can use any other you can still you can use dbp as well the same as the instance owner doesn't matter so you it's your choice whatever you want to use so now i got we have a, a user called dbc here and this particular user is what we are going to use to create the client so now i am under instance directory under this there is a utility called db2 i create this command is what we are going to use to create our instance and the command would be something like this so db2 i create minus s client so the, i'm saying the instance type is client and the name of the instance is dbc and that's the that's right now the the db to client instance is getting created on the application server so that's done now let's clear the screen and now let's go to the client instance let's 
look at what is this and you can see it is a data server client now if i run the same command here and you can see it is a db2 community edition so it's a it's a 11.5 community edition so this is the database soft server the white color is the database server the blue color is the client machine and from this client machine we are going to connect to the database which is hosted on the database server so from db2 from host db2 we are going to connect to host db1 so the client is installed so this is all good now it's time to run those catalog commands so let's before doing that let's run a command called db2 list so list node directory will tell you if there are there is any directory and it should be empty because we just created so the node directory cannot be found let's look at the database directory and also the database directory sorry there is a spelling mistake here database directory you can also use a db directory short form so you and you can see neither there is a node directory neither there is a database directory so let's do one thing so this is the client machine the blue machine the db2 node directory is empty db2 db directory is empty now let's do let's create a client so what i'm going to say is catalog tcp ip node this is the no node name of your choice whatever name you want to give remote which server is where your db2 database is running and what is the port number and that port number is 5001 that's the port number that we configure so run this particular command that's done now the next command is the database command so let's run this particular command and here the node is what i've specified here so catalog database name of the database and node i'm going to specify this that's done now let's run this particular command and you should be able to see that there is one node on our machine which is a rail 9 and it's pointing to tcp is pointing to db1 at this particular port number and let's run the db list db directory and you should be able to see that we have got a database called first one two three which is pointing to node called rail 9 which is in turn pointing to server so node and the data database so you have to do the catalog you have to do the catalog uh, no catalog node and then the catalog database now if I had the multiple databases, I would catalog and I'll show it to you at, at now. So let's do something. Let's now try to, let's go to the server, clear the screen. So, and let's say run db2 list applications and no data was written, which is good. So there is absolutely no connection. So now from the client machine, from the client machine, I'm going to now connect. So db2 connect to first one two three user dbp using password and and you can see i'm connected let's run the command called db2 list applications and you can see that there is a connection which is coming from 102 now what is this 102 if i run ip i have config grep inet you can see that 102 is the IP address of the client machine. So from 102, there is a connection coming to this particular database. DB2 list application was none. And now when I connected, that is the connection. Now, if I run DB2 connect reset, and now if I run this, the connection is gone. So, you know, the we have, now let's do something There is on our server probably there is another database so let's let's run db2 list db directory so there are two databases so you can see there is a test database and there is a first one two three so what i'm going to do now from the client on the client i'm going to catalog the second database as well so the command to do that would be catalog database test and again i don't have to catalog the node because it's under the same node that's done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do db2 terminate to refresh the cache so that's done and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open two sessions okay now i've got two sessions and this is my database server what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it big and db2 list applications 
and no data and i'm going to do something i'm going to connect to from this session i'm going to say connect to first one two three user dbp using password that's done and now i'm going to run the same command once again from the second session this time test user dbp using password and that's done so now i've connected from this session i'm connected to test from this session i'm connected to first one two three and let's verify and you can see now let's let me make minimize this let me minimize this and you can see that there are two connections coming from 102 one to database called first one two three one to database test and the reason why it was possible because we cataloged the, we installed the client and we catalog those two databases. So let's revise what we have done is we have to enable the database for remote connectivity, update the service name using the db2 update, update the registry variable, stop and start, then download the client, install the client, create the client instance using db2 i create, switch to that particular client, catalog the node, catalog the database and connect. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. With this particular tutorial, you learned how to install IBM DB2 11.5.8 client on Rail 9.1. And hope you, after this watching this particular tutorial, if you want to configure, if you have to configure the client in your environment, you would be able to install the client and you know you will be able to help the application team to connect to your database. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. And if you do like the videos and if you do like my content, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you know you can get notified when the next video is uploaded thank you for watching and see you in next video bye bye